be ceding sovereignty to foreign investors. I call the Honourable Nathan Guy. Well, that was a very interesting call from the Green member. But I'm sincere. She has just been saying things that Labour used to say. Right. Only a matter of months ago, we would have heard a same content of speech by David Parker and others on that side of the House. He's shaking, he's shaking his head, but we know... We know that we would have heard the same rhetoric from Labor in the election campaign, and indeed we did. I've got to hand it to the Greens, because it's not often that I agree with much that they say. But we have heard from that member this evening a speech that hasn't changed in their rhetoric about trade, even though I don't agree with it. This side of the House, we don't agree what the previous speaker just said but they have spoken with a degree of principle, and they haven't shifted their stance. What we've seen in the last couple of months is a real shift. It's almost like liquefaction over the other side of the house. <laughs> liquefaction has crept through their toes, they've sunk down a bit, they've realised that this trade agreement is really important for New Zealand, doing? it's important for job growth, it's important for reducing costs, and fundamentally the New Zealand economy needs this agreement. So off David Parker and Winston Peters and the Prime Minister went to try and sort out what they thought were issues with this deal, and they've come back and they've put CP at the front of TPP. And now they stand up in the House and say, we've got these amazing changes. It's a, they're comprehensive, 28 of them. But when you delve down into the detail, it's really very much window dressing. And what I'm really keen to hear in this debate this evening is about the approach that the government takes to trade overall. Because this is just one agreement. This is a really important one. It's taken a long time to get here this evening. But we're not hearing from the government. What is their plan on the New Zealand EU? free trade agreement. We've spent a huge amount of time, and I acknowledge Todd McClay and Jerry Brownlee and the work that they did, and before that, and yes, you're right, yeah, 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 Todd did a huge amount of work. And of course, what I'm hearing from this government is that the Prime Minister is not going to travel very much, obviously. Pregnant, baby coming on board, that's great, fantastic news, congratulations. So the Prime Minister won't be leading big trade delegation. She'll go to the Pacific shortly, then she'll go to Europe, UK, have a photograph with the Queen. Fantastic. That'll be it. What I'm also hearing is that the Minister for Foreign Affairs won't be doing a lot of travelling. He'll put Fletcher Tabato on the plane and try and get a trade delegation together, and, and businesses in New Zealand will go, who? who? Who is this guy? Who is he? Oh, that's right, he's the new Deputy Leader of New Zealand First. And David Parker won't be doing much travelling. He's the Minister for Economic Development and quite a few other things as well. He should be leading trade delegations around the world, but he won't because he's got to keep an eye on Shane Jones' Provincial Fund as the Minister. And, of course, we've already seen the first real blooper under that new fund, $61 million announced last week. And already we are seeing that fund hit liquefaction as well, probity issues. And so getting back to the issue, Madam Speaker, Thank you. David Parker is not going to travel as well. So businesses are coming to the National Party worried about the overall focus and the trade agenda of this new government because their senior leadership team aren't going to travel. It's going to be left to Fletcher Tabato and Damien O'Connor. And it's fine having a debate about trade, but we've just concluded, or they've just concluded their 100-day program. It's been a real shocker for the primary sector. They don't support irrigation. Now, irrigation helps us grow our exports. It helps our farmers and processors put more products into market. It creates jobs. Unfortunately, the coalition government, we know the Greens don't support irrigation. We've got issues in biosecurity which is a real trade issue as well, because if you don't get on top of biosecurity issues, 
that impacts what we can do in the trade space. Also, we have got numerous other issues in their 100-day programme that they haven't addressed. The other one is that they're not getting on top of Mycoplasma bovis, a massive cattle disease. Fortunately, fortunately, farmers can still find a market and get those into export, and the CPTPP will help, particularly for our beef farmers into the lucrative Japanese market. This government is raiding from the Research and Development Fund, PGP, under MPI, they're raiding that to do a rebranding exercise. That's not going to grow exports for our CPTPP market. You must train a little way outside of the motion, so I'd encourage you to come back. Well, I am coming back to it, Madam Chair, all the time, Madam Speaker, because it's really important when you think about the primary sector and you think about the Trans-Pacific Partnership with CP in front of it, it's really important that this government supports our primary producers, and I acknowledge them, that they are supporting the CPTPP. That's fantastic. But we're unsure and we're not hearing enough from them about their broader trade agreement because they're not prepared to travel the world and open up new market opportunities. And that's really disappointing for our exporters to get a pretty clear indication that this government is more about domestic politics than they are looking at a full international approach. So, Madam Speaker, in summary, what we have heard this evening is that Labor and New Zealand First were lions in opposition. Now they're mere lambs. And I'll leave everyone to think about that. We heard all the rhetoric in the campaign how terrible TPP was, so they went off to the meeting, came back with CP, bolted it on the front. It's pretty much the same agreement. We should get on with dealing constructively across the parliament on these trade issues, and it would have been great if they hadn't been drumming up votes or trying to from the Greenies and the Lefties that they'd supported a broad trade agreement. So my challenge back to David Parker and other senior economic-facing ministers is please get out there and lead some trade delegations, because you can't leave it to junior ministers to open the doors that we need to see for our exporters to reach into these very lucrative international markets. Thank you. Madam Speaker. Jean Tanetti, split call. This is five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to stand here today and join in this debate to talk about the comprehensive